What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we are making our final installment, our official build guide video here for our Stormclaw Druid in Season 2. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is because not only do I want to get this build out to as many people as possible so they can enjoy this build because it is a fun, phenomenal build that you can do every aspect of the game with, but I received a ton of questions in the comments section for my videos and I'd like to just go back over them just to answer as many as I possibly could before I lay this build down for the rest of the season and move on to making something brand new for you guys to enjoy. So with all that being said, let's get right into the video. As you can see, we are over on the Mobilytics page again, and there will be a link to this page as we'll say link to my Lilith kill and my tier 100 clear down in the description below. But the first thing I want to talk about is my gear pieces. Now, the only unique you absolutely have to have for this build is Great Staff of the Chrome. And that's because it's a Stormclaw build and it really wouldn't function without it. So before you get this staff, I would highly recommend that you use something like a standard Lightning Storm Druid build or something like that to level your character until you get this to drop. And then you can start to transition into this build and you should see a nice increase in your damage as well as your farming speed as you do so. The first question I get asked a lot here is how do I have Cyclone Armor equipped on my skill bar without actually having direct points invested through my skill tree? Well, that's because I have Tempest Roar in combination with Mad Wolf's Glee. And how does that work? Well, Tempest Roar allows our Storm skills to also count as Werewolf skills to which Mad Wolf's Glee will then give those skills plus three ranks, okay? So that's how we can do say cyclone armor without having direct points invested through our skill tree. So I hope that kind of clears up that question and allows you guys to understand exactly what's going on there. Now, the next one I get is, can you equip a Harlequin's Crest for this build? To which I will tell you absolutely, yes, you can use Harlequin's Crest. In fact, I would probably use it, but I haven't got one to drop. And Harlequin's Crest is great because not only does it give us a nice chunk of max life, cooldown reduction and all stats, but it gives us much more tankiness with a 10 to 20% damage reduction in addition to plus four ranks to all skills. So you can see why this would be a great replacement for Tempest Roar. And it might even free up your chest piece off of Mad Wolf's Glee, or you can keep it on because I personally like Mad Wolf's Glee and the movement speed and the ranks you get from it. Now for our gloves, we have the conceited aspect because we want that nice pull of multiplicative damage off of our gloves because we'll always have a barrier active because we'll be spamming earthen bulwark like crazy. And then for the affixes, the three that I highly, highly recommend is having crit strike chance, attack speed, and lucky hit chance. The fourth can be whatever you really prefer. I like all stats because I've always liked all stats and honestly, it helps me unlock the passives on my paragon board. Then for our pants, I have up a basic pair of pants here with Aspect of Disobedience just to continue to reach that armor cap easier. And then uh, for affixes, it can be a combination of any defensive affixes that you personally prefer or that you need for your character to reach resistance caps or armor caps for high tier nightmare dungeon pushing. I really just have these affixes up here as an example, but some nice uniques you can use for your pants for doing different content, and we'll talk about strategy here in a second, is Temerity, because Temerity combined with Undying is pretty powerful. It constantly keeps a barrier up on your hero because we'll constantly be overhilling. And then Tebow's Will for a massive chunk of multiplicative damage here while we're unstoppable. And we'll constantly be unstoppable because we'll ha either have Earthen Bulwark going or Metamorphosis. Then for our boots, we're really just using Symbiotic Aspect as be this will be proccing our uh, Nature's Fury to cool down our skills. And again, our stat priority, the only two I would recommend having on this build is movement speed and total armor while in werewolf form. The other two affixes here are just flex spots. I have damage reduction while injured in all stats as an example. Then for our amulet, which is a flex spot here, depending on what content we're doing, and we're going to, again, talk about that in just a second, is rapid aspect for the aspect for the increased attack speed and then the only two affixes i would highly recommend again is movement speed and total armor while in werewolf form the other two affixes are flex spots they can be some form of damage reduction as you see here or some form of damage increase with the envenom passive as you can see 
Then for our rings, the aspect I will never change on this build because it does so much damage is the overcharged aspect. And the affixes I highly recommend are crit strike chance and lucky hit chance with damage to close enemies because that will play into our specific glyph on our Paragon board, but we'll talk about that later. And then for our fourth affix, it can really be whatever you want. I have crit strike damage here. You can have uh, vulnerable damage, whatever you prefer, but definitely the overcharge aspect. And then for our last ring aspect, the Edge Masters aspect for a nice pull of multiplicative damage again, while our primary resource is full, and obviously it's going to be full forever because we do not use any core skills. And you'll see here we have the crit strike chance, the lucky hit chance, and the damage to close enemies. And then the fourth affix is whatever you prefer. But that's really how I would structure my gear. And then for gems, I use Topaz on the weapon to increase basic skill damage. Sapphire on the armor to give us that nice damage reduction while fortified because we'll always be fortified because of earth and bulwark and then diamonds on our jewelry for the resistance increase because capping our resistances is pretty important in this season. Something noteworthy here I want to mention before we go on to our vampiric powers because it plays a role in metamorphosis is we want to make sure we have the boots that reduce our evade cooldown off of our basic skill usage so that way we can constantly use evade to maintain our unstoppable along with our earthen bulwark. So for our vampiric powers the first one we have here is hectic. Hectic gives us that cooldown reduction on our active cooldowns for every five basic skills we use which we are attacking really fast and that will constantly generate cooldown then ravenous ravenous is obviously one of the key vampiric powers here that you cannot take off it gives us a massive attack speed boost based off of 40 percent of our total movement speed at a 20 percent chance to proc on lucky hit and because we attack so fast and we have a high high lucky hit you know we're pretty much getting this buff almost 100 percent of the time and a noteworthy part about this buff is that it refreshes itself during the duration of the active buff so we can keep it up so often. Then Metamorphosis, great, great mobility vampiric power. This is a flex spot though, and we'll talk about that when we talk about strategy. And uh, again, a great evade. It gives us that unstoppable for four seconds. And something really good about it is that you can use your evade while you're stunned. So really, really good if you get caught off guard when your bulwark is not up. And then another flex spot, but a key one when pushing high tier nightmare dungeons and farming is undying. We get that 3% life just based off of our, our skills we cast. And because basic skills count as part of the skills we cast, we're just getting 3% life back all the time. And then obviously the bonus is doubled when we are below 50% life. So something really good about this is that we get that life back even if we're not hitting anything, which plays into the unique temerity so we can constantly keep that uh, barrier up no matter whether there's enemies in front of us or not and then a key vampiric power here again moonrise moonrise gives us that increase in our uh, basic skill attack speed by four percent up to a stack of five for 10 seconds so 20 percent attack speed basically and then once we hit max stacks we get this big vampiric blood rage buff which gives us a 160 percent basic skill damage and more movement speed. So another vampiric power that we must have. So let's talk about strategy now when pushing into the high tier nightmare dungeons to complete our tier 100 dungeon, as well as completing our Uber Lilith fight. So for a tier 100 dungeon clear, I have two recorded completions currently on my channel. And the first one pretty much used the exact same vampiric powers that you'll find here on the Mobilytics page, as well as the same pants you'll find here on the Mobilytics page. So it used a pair of pants with really nice defensive stats on it, as well as aspect of disobedience and the amulet with rapid aspect on it, as well as movement speed and three nice defensive affixes. And that allowed me to reach cap resistances and have a high amount of armor. So completing that dungeon was pretty easy and I did it in a decent time frame. However, my second completion, and that was in Lubin's Rest, was far easier and far faster. And I couldn't really skip anything because I actually had to kill all of the enemies because that's one of the stipulations for that dungeon. So what I did was I changed my pants to Temerity 
And then I changed my amulet to the aspect of disobedience with the movement speed and the damage reduction rolls. And then I changed my edge master's ring here to the rapid aspect. So that way I maintain that high amount of attack speed. And you're probably asking yourself, well, how did you manage to cap out your resistances? Well, that's because, and a lot of people forget, we have potions, guys. We usually just use those for experience increases, but there's some awfully nice potions you can use. And the one I used was the Elixir of Magic Resist, is what I believe it's called. And uh, that potion alone gives you 25% resistance to all all of your resistances. So it pretty much capped out my resistances. I had enough damage reduction and armor from just making those small changes that clearing a tier 100 dungeon became child's play basically. So just remember that guys, when you're doing those tier 100 dungeons and you're doing uber bosses, you have potions that will boost up your damage and your damage reduction, and you also have incense. So don't always just rely on the build itself. And then for my Uber Lilith kill, which you'll probably see at the beginning of this video, uh, I just basically swapped out my pants here for Tebow's Will. Tebow's Will is really good because it gives us that big multiplicative damage bonus here for while we're unstoppable. And we're always unstoppable because we're spamming Bulwark. Now, the big difference here is my Vampiric Powers. So for my Vampiric Powers, I swapped out Undying because we didn't really need that extra health for Prey on the Weak. And Prey on the Weak is really good because it gives us that 16% multiplicative damage against vulnerable enemies. And then I swapped out Metamorphosis because we don't need the Unstoppable or the Evade for bossing to Sanguine Brace just for that extra just for that extra crit chance while we have Max Fortify. So that's how I approach my Tier 100 dungeons. That's how I approach beating Uber Lilith. So I hope that helps you guys and answers a lot of the questions I got about survivability and uh, damage increase going into the end game. So now that we're done with the gear and the vampiric powers, let's go ahead and look over our spirit boons before we move on to our skill tree. So for our boons, we're using... Uh, weariness on the deer for 10% reduced damage from elites. For the eagle, we're bonded here for the attack speed boost from swooping attacks. And then the critical strike damage increase from avian wrath. For wolf, we use calamity for the extended duration on our petrify while we're pushing nightmare dungeons. And for the snake, we're using overload just to help with our AOE damage because we are kind of limited there with the fact that we're using a basic skill for our attack. So this is a storm claw build. So the first five points go into claw. And that moves up into Wild Claw, so we have that chance to attack twice. Then we have Storm Strike, which moves up into Fear Storm Strike, so we maintain vulnerability on our enemies. And then the one thing I get asked the most about is Earth Spike. Why do I have points here? It's not on my bar, etc. So the reason why we have Earth Spike is because this build is based off of Nature's Fury. And Nature's Fury gives us those free skill procs off of our opposite elemental skill type. So when we're using storm skills, we get free procs from earth skills and vice versa. And why we have two points is because we're looking to get an enhanced earth spike for that 10% chance to stun. And that happens quite often because of how much earth spike procs off of our high, high attack speed. And why is this good? So when we're pushing into high tier nightmare dungeons, especially that tier 100, we take a lot of damage. And what this does is allows us to preemptively stun up some of those monster packs at times so we can clear out those monsters without taking damage to ourselves. And then for bosses, this actually builds stagger quite quickly. If you go over to my Uber Lilith kill, you'll see in just a short amount of time I was fighting her, I managed to build up her stagger bar with Petrify and this alone. It was pretty crazy. So just keep that in mind. These are flex points, but I prefer that stun. That stun is really, really good. And with the changes to Nature's Fury, these Earth Spike procs do quite a bit of damage. Moving down into our core skills, you'll see I have none of these. I do have the passive Predatory Instinct for that increased crit strike chance, as well as Digigrade Gate. Now, these are flex points here. If you need more survivability, you can put them into different defensive passives. I didn't really need more, so I moved them back into the movement speed bonus. Now for our defensive skills, we have one point Earth and Bulwark, which we follow up to preserving Earth and Bulwark, so we have a reliable way to build Fortify as well as Unstoppable on top of our Metamorphosis. 
And then for our passive damage reduction, we have Ancestral Fortitude for that 15% increase to elemental resistances. And then we have Vigilance. Two points here. You could put more points if you need more survivability from Digigrade Gate. And that's just to give us a damage reduction after using a defensive skill. And because we're just spamming Earth and Bulwark, we always have this damage reduction. Moving down to our companions, we did pick up two points in Ravens here. We got one point in regular Ravens into the passive. That gives us an increased critical strike chance against enemies hit by our Ravens. 8% is a pretty, pretty big increase there. Moving down to our Wrath skill tree, we have one point Hurricane into Savage Hurricane for that 20% damage reduction from enemies hit with Hurricane. For the passive tree over here, we have one point Elemental Exposure. 1 point Charged Atmosphere, 3 points Electric Shock because of the high chance to inflict enemies with Immobilize as well as the huge damage increase to enemies that are Immobilized, and then 3 points Bad Omen for that high lucky hit chance so we're proccing Lightning Bolts and that will play into our Paragon board and one of our Glyphs. Then for the passes we have Neurotoxin, Toxic Claws, and then three points in Venom, so we get that nice critical strike damage increase. Moving down to our ultimate, we have Petrify. I really wouldn't change out of Petrify. I honestly felt like it was amazing for bossing and for uh, dungeon pushing. I never really used Cataclysm after I really got settled in with Petrify. And then we pick up one point for that increased duration with Petrify. So enemies are stunned in place for a very long time. A very long time when you consider our boon, and then you consider this duration increase. Then we pick up three points in the passive defiance for the multiplicative damage bonus to elite enemies here. One point natural disaster. And then three points resonance because, you know, we will be spamming bulwark, so we will get those occasional triple procs from resonance. And then obviously the 6% multiplicative damage increase is pretty nice. If you needed more tankiness here, you could go one point quick shift and three point heightened senses because we will be swapping back and forth between werewolf and human uh, when we use our earthen bulwark. And then last but certainly not least, the key passive here, Nature's Fury. Got a big buff for this season with uh, free skills now counting as both Earth and Storm skills. And uh, honestly, it is the best in my opinion. It definitely beats out Earth and Might. However, Earth and Might is a decent pickup if you want to run that in your build as well. Because you attack so fast, we do get that buff pretty frequently. But I just love Nature's Fury. It adds so much to the build, so much damage, so much tankiness, just based off of the fact that you can use Symbiotic on the boots and get that constant cooldown to your skills. So I like Nature's Fury. Now onto the Paragon board. And we did make a few changes here from the last update video, but listen to me, guys. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate everything. We're not going to change it again. I promise we're not changing it. It is what it is. It's staying like this. I'm putting it down, and we're going to make a new build for you guys. But let's go ahead and go over those changes now. So the first thing we did on the first board is pick up Electrocution. And the reason why we did is because of the additional bonus there. It gives us that 20% multiplicative damage from enemies that are hit by our lightning bolts, which we get a lot from Bad Omen. So that 20% multiplicative damage pretty much outclassed any other rune I could put there. So we ended up taking off Exploiter and we moved Fulminate into its position. But that's going to stay like it is. Electrocution, insanely good glyph this season. I'm glad they added it to the game. Then we moved into our Constricting Tendrils board. And you'll see here, that's where we put our Fulminate. Great for increasing lightning damage, as well as that multiplicative damage bonus to healthy and injured enemies. Then we swapped around our Lust for Carnage board. You'll see we definitely rotated it. And that's because I wanted to pick up some more of these rare notes here to increase our damage while in werewolf's form, or I should say to increase our werewolf skill damage, as well as increase our critical strike damage. So I was able to pick up this node as well as this werewolf node. And then again, the same thing undaunted here for that increased damage while fortified, but also the damage reduction while fortified. So something for you softcore players out there, I play hardcore for you guys, you could easily swap out some of these damage reduction glyphs for something like a guzzler that scales a little bit better with your damage but we want that damage reduction in hardcore because we got one life and that's it so we needed that damage reduction so keep that in mind you could probably swap out some of these glyphs uh, for higher damage glyphs 
Then we moved out of there into our Height and Malice board. And we took the Werewolf Glyph because, again, we're getting that massive amount of damage while in Werewolf form. And we're getting that 10% damage reduction. And once I finished everything up with this build, I had a few points left over. So we went ahead and picked up some extra points and willpower here just to increase that damage bonus even further. And I know this says 40 for 40 here, but that's because it's bugged out. It doesn't count this rare node as 10 willpower, so this is really 50 willpower. Then we moved up into Thunderstruck, and Thunderstruck is amazing, and another reason why we have uh, damage to close enemies on our rings is because Thunderstruck gives us a huge damage bonus based off of the combination of damage to close enemies versus damage to distant enemies. And because we managed to boost up this damage to close enemies so much, we get a 40% multiplicative damage bonus just from this legendary note alone. And then we have Territorial here, again, increasing our damage to close targets as well as giving us that damage reduction from close targets and again i had those few points left over so we did go ahead and pick up the last two dexterity nodes here for this glyph so we could further boost that damage to close enemies as well as boost up the multiplicative damage we receive from the legendary node and then last but certainly not least the uh, ancestral guidance board we ended up picking up the spirit glyph here so we could have that increase to our critical strike damage as well as more multiplicative damage here for enemies hit by our critical strikes but the big rare node here that we traveled up here to get was the rare node spiritual power for that 35 percent basic skill damage increase as well as two magic nodes that give us 17.5 here and 17.5 here so that's pretty much it for the build, guys. This is it. This is the last build video you'll see with regards to my Stormclaw build. It is cemented. It is etched in stone. It is not going to change barring anything significant from a patch. I really, really hope that you guys are enjoying this build a lot. I hope you get to push through all your goals of tier 100 completions and killing Uber Lilith. I will continue to put out content of my kills as well as a brand new build coming to you guys. And it is going to be the brother of the werewolf, the werebear. So a really cool build I'm hoping to build out for werebear. But that's it, guys. The final chapter in my Stormclaw build for Season 2. We're closing the book on it, moving on. I really appreciate you guys for all your support and all your patience. Again, I am a new content creator. This is my first official build I posted to YouTube. And, man, I am so glad that you guys are enjoying it, those that have tried it out. And uh, I really appreciate your support again. And, you know, I'm going to continue to crank out content for you guys because, man, I love doing this stuff. It is a lot of fun. But that is all for me. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal day or night, depending on wherever you're from. And peace out, guys. I will see you in the next one.